All right, fun. I, I, I've had enough. No, no more doom and gloom. Fun time. I demand fun in my life, Harry. <laughs> I'll throw the knife away for now. All right, we're gonna have some fun. All right, two thousands TV. Now, do you remember the two thousands? Oh yeah. I don't really. I was I was like three, but I was also very <laughs> young. But I pretend like I remember them very well. But twenty ten. Ah, now there we are. I'm thirteen. I know what's going on. I'm watching TV because what else do I do? You're thirteen, and I I didn't. I didn't really realize how weird a lot of the old TV shows were, particularly the ones around vanity, about being too fat, too skinny, or too ugly. Mm. Because I don't watch TV anymore. Yeah, there were those shows where it would be like, you're hideous, let me make you beautiful. <laughs> sort yourself out, you ugly, fat bastard. <laughs> yeah. And then they would go through this big transformation, and they would look worse afterwards, because they would just cake them in plastic. So I thought we'd just go back and enjoy, because uh, I stumbled back across it, and I thought, I thought everyone else would enjoy this. I hope you will. I'll we'll start by promoting something, of course, this being the economics of Margin Call. This is by Dan, and the reason I'm mentioning it is because he's an old B who, who remembers <laughs> the 2000s. Are you saying... <laughs> I know where this is about to go. Are you saying something about Dan right here? Well, he saying, remembers the 2000s. I don't think that's insulting. Is it? Are you saying something... Are you saying he needs to lose some weight? No, I wasn't, but if you want to, if you want to say that, that's, that's horrible, Harry. Have you? Oh, that's terrible. Dan, you're perfect. Dan, if you're watching, this wasn't actually meant to be an attack on you. He brought that up. I didn't know. <laughs> I'm just feeling like you're making an association here that could be picked up on. Nah, nah. But, um. Phobe. But. <laughs> <laughs> you're not fat, Dan. I'm joking. You, but you make a very good video, at least. <laughs> yeah, Logical. You make great Go check that out. Anyway, but the thing I want to talk about is uh, this chap in <laughs> yep. particular. And as you can see, this is the best of British comedy. Now, this is a TV show that was called Fat Families. And Fat Families was rather brutal. It was, uh, it was put out on air in 2010. And um, I remember that era being very much obsessed with the rising obesity rate in the UK and everyone being like, man, we should do something about it. So for some reason... It is genuinely a worry that we need to take care of. Yeah, it, it was, you know, a fair point. But for some reason, the, the media industry in the UK decided to make um, like reality TV out of it. I went, <laughs> but I'm a fan of shaving hey, to lose 20, weight. The, the 2000s to the mid 2010s were the show where reality TV was everything and everywhere. Yeah, but I mean, like, I'm a fan of shaming people to make them lose weight. It worked on me. You know, I, I was too fat, and there's people shamed me, and I lost some weight. That was, that was a good idea. Um, I got people to fat shame me recently as well, and it works. I don't know about this. Let's play this guy. I'm in Telford, Shropshire, and I'm about to meet one of the fattest families I've met in my life. I'm here in the Peak District and about to meet two right massive fatty siblings <laughs> who are at the peak of their porkiness. I'm going to be meeting some right beach blubber bellies. I'm in Luton, Bedfordshire, and about to meet three right jelly belly jumbos. I'm in London yeah. Town, the nation's capital, home to Big Ben, Houses of Parliament, the London Eye, and four gigantic girls. These girls have got backstage passes to Porkyville. These fatties haven't seen their feet for years. I'm about to meet a family of Essex fatties. I'm about to meet a right pair of podgy parents. I used to be a fatty myself. It's Mr. and Mrs. Massive Fatty. I'm about to meet a colossal couple. That's if they can get off their backsides long enough to answer the door. These parents' kids are on a one-way road to Fatsville. No wonder he's such a massive fatty. I'm about to meet a right portly parent. I'm about to meet two right bouncing brummies. I'm about to meet a right pair of wobblers whose weight's completely <laughs> out of control. Watch out, massive fatties. The lard police are in town. Too much time sat on their fat bums. That's their problem. That woman is so fat, she can't even walk around the shop. She's actually trapped in a body of lard. If they don't pull out their chubby <laughs> fingers, they'll be on the way to an early grade. I've told these lazy lardies what I think. It's time for these guys to start pulling their chubby God, fingers dying. out. They haven't got a clue what they're shoveling in their cake hole. Kaylee really is on the slippery slope to becoming a massive fatty. Britain is becoming a nation of fatties. I know the truth hurts, but it's the only way I'm going to get these two off their fat backsides. <coughs> well, watch out, massive fatties. <coughs> the lard melters at large. If this chubby clan could control their chomping, they wouldn't need me at all. It's a one-way ticket to wobbly world. <laughs> watch out, massive fatties. <laughs> Three massive fatties. <laughs> They're big, big bodies. Watch out, butter mountains. <laughs> I'm coming to melt you. Sort of clip time that to pay me. attention in my fatty detention. <laughs> North Yorkshire. North Porkshire, more like. <laughs> These two chunky cousins, a.k.a. massive fatties. Well, watch out, you dumpy donuts. The lard buster's on his way. They only did, like, it 12 just, episodes. It keeps going. <laughs> yeah, it just <laughs> carries on and on forever into infinity. This ma I respect the inventiveness. There's some real creativity went in there. How long do you have to sit down and, before you end up thinking of one-way ticket to Wobbly World or backstage yeah. tickets to Pork Trigal? 
But you're the one that they don't know what they're putting in their cake hole. I mean, presumably cake. I just but. like the fact that people would have had to sign up for this show. So you'd go like, we're going we're gonna to do yeah. a show where we just call you fat for over like, and over again. About 40 minutes. And you're nationally humiliated on public television. Sign here on the dotted line, please. <laughs> and then people signed up. They really did. Yeah, you see, the guy looked massive, porky wobbler. That's me. Yeah, big fatty. Anyway, sorry, but it's just the, the way he, like every 30 seconds he ends up calling them fat as well. But I'll get to that in a minute. We, we can see here, he did a review of this. What's he doing nowadays? So this is uh, The Sun, where he, he did uh, an interview. Where he's like, yeah, I hosted a TV show called Fat Families. I made people oh, cry. Oh, don't regret it. No regrets. Oh, he has. He, he doesn't regret it. Oh, no. I couldn't see the cameras in the way. Good. He just went, nah. Good man. He was like, they're fat. <laughs> Now they're thin. I did my job. <laughs> He's like the fat devil who turns up and just goes fatty <laughs> until you lose weight. Anyway, but this is um, a thing he's talked about at length. He says here, you know, the show would never be made now, made now after the massive fatties videos. I mean, obviously. Yeah, but he's not wrong. Probably, probably wouldn't be made again, which is a shame because that is uh, horrific but funny. Uh, we can see more. The Wikipedia list for this. Fat Families. Uh, two seasons. So there you are. 14 episodes. 14 episodes. Yeah. Fair play. What's weird is, I mean, it must be just back in the day when there was no internet, just back in ye olde days when we watched There TV. was still internet in 2010. No, there wasn't. Yeah, I, <laughs> how, how, else, the history how else was I legally watching South Park? Um, through legal means. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you see here, like, there's a bunch of episodes and people, you know, lose 28 pounds. His wife lost 28 pounds. Tanya over there, his second wife presumably was. That's actually really impressive. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, results... It turns out if you shout massive fatty at someone... It does work. <laughs> Honestly, it does work. There's a point where you get diminishing returns with it. Yeah. But it does work. There is actually one sad bit to the diminishing returns here in episode four, where the couple refuse to engage with the process. As really? Here. And then Steve here, the man in the, in the show, uh, dies one year later from health complications with his heart. Should have listened. If he just learned this <laughs> massive fatty, he might still be here today. It's harsh, but you're probably right. Um, it, it is. Yeah, so there's, there's that. Um, otherwise, yeah, everyone lost some weight, so that's that nice. usually worked. Pretty harsh regime. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the iron fist of fatties. <laughs> yeah, Stalin himself over here. I mean, Mr. <laughs> and and it, it is kind of gross, because, I mean, you can go and see the episodes. Uh, uh, disgustingly, they're still available on Daily Motion. How could they do this? Oh, to, terrible. The, the uh, Sky One Corporation that totally needs more money. Anyway, but it, there's... <laughs> this... Oh, a spoiler, what's actually. That a, what's that fork POV shot? Yeah, there's yeah. a bunch of fork This cams. is what the food sees before it dies. I don't know how you do this as well, because like, they're using proper cameras, so you need to think about it, because we've got some cameras in front of us. Start, you know, Get some sellotape, put a fork on the bottom, and then dig some food while you're holding the camera and then shove it in Fatty's mouth. <laughs> so, so you can... Th How else do you get this shot? Because she ate off that form the, the, as well. The, these, these people just like, is this entirely necessary? We need to, to know how fat you are. <laughs> well, that's the thing. It does kind of turn into that demonic, whatever, Fatty, eat some more donuts on camera, Fatty. <laughs> we'll get to that in a minute, but I just wanted to play one more clip of the show because the show is <laughs> it's just something Demented. else. Well, they talk about inflation in the show. Um, oh, not our inflation, I bet. No. Meet Steve Radford and his fiancée, Lou. Trim, toned, and in perfect shape for the big day. Wrong! They actually look like this. <laughs> These two will be waddling up the aisle. That's <laughs> <laughs> just, just so unnecessary. <laughs> so, uh, and this is what you could look <laughs> like, fatty. Yeah, literally. Um, and they do this at every single episode. Or show like, what they could look like slim. Yeah, you know how um, Gordon Ramsay's Kitchen Nightmares kind of gets formulaic after a while? Yeah, you, you figure out the same thing happens with this show, of course, because it's early TV. Well, not early; it was kind of late. This is an early TV. Yeah, in which um, the, every single episode, they're like, "Oh, look how fit they are!" Wrong, they're actually fat. Look at them. Look at these fat pigs, core wobbling down the aisle, as he says to this one here. And it's just like Jesus Christ. And they get nice like, pictures <laughs> of them smiling, looking friendly. I mean, yeah, they should be in better shape, but they don't look like bad people. But it's just... That's why they need to be punished. <laughs> look, you could be so much better. Could you not, like, calm down? No. Mr. Host? Well, if he hadn't, perhaps it wouldn't have done as well. Perhaps they wouldn't have lost all that weight. Maybe. Um, probably not. But <laughs> there's a whole other issue. I mean, the fork cam stuff I've mentioned before, which is pretty um, 
Is this what you Rip. were passing your time with in Russia when you're on a down moment? You're like, I need to watch some fat families. Oh, no, I, I got back and did this. Don't worry, they don't, they don't have this problem now. But there's uh, an insight from Vice who decided to do some interviews. And uh, I'll just quickly go through this, in which they, they called a bunch of people who took part in the episodes and just asked them, why the hell did you sign up to do that? <laughs> because literally... I mean, this is my question, so that's a good question, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they, they mentioned in here that they, there was some weirdness, which they didn't expect when they signed up for the show, which is um, they made us go around the supermarket, said one family, and throw things into the trolley that we wouldn't actually normally put in the trolley. Cuff says, uh, Hadrill and her family had a favorite garden center where they would go and either eat lunch or have coffee and a cake. Whilst filming the show, they were told to have both of those things, one after the other, as they filmed them. They would also encourage them to add extra portions to their food so they could just make them look fatter than they actually... I mean, they were fat, but like... I mean, this is all... <laughs> Honestly, this is all part and parcel for reality TV. Yeah. Reality TV is massively manipulated by all of the producers who want to exaggerate it. And then the weight loss thing, they just made them skip meals. It wasn't a healthy diet. It was they just don't eat fat, so. Well, no, it'll be, yeah, calorie restriction. If you want to lose Which... weight, calorie restriction is the most effective way of doing so. And if you're eating too much on a day by day and not exercising enough, calorie restriction is what's going to yeah, do it. Yeah, starving yourself will make you lose weight, but it's, it's, it's not, not starving yourself if you get into a calorie deficit. Well, no, it's, it's not like that. It's, it, it, from the uh, interviews here, it seems more like they were just like, just don't eat today. Oh, okay. Like, this yeah, this isn't actually healthy, yeah, that's not but I will one. lose weight. <laughs> so... It was good for the, the numbers there. They spoke to a bunch of families. Um, many of them very much regretted being on the show. Oh, really? The bullying that <laughs> resulted afterwards. Oh, dear. Because, of course... If, if they lost weight... Yeah, but if you play on national TV, you and your family getting called Fatty Boombati for 40 minutes straight. Strangely enough, when your kid goes to school the next day, after everyone has seen this on national TV, uh, they kind of bully your kid, not to mention you. It's a legacy, though, isn't it? Is that really the <laughs> thing you want to root for? <laughs> Uh, there's two families who even refused to speak to Vice, and they said the reason was is because it just left them so mentally bad off. Really? So there's that. Um, this is Vice. I, I, I distrust Vice. But they yeah. have uh, one family who does say that actually it was an overall positive experience because they were going to die if they kept up their current lifestyle. There you go. So there's that. I mean, there is one guy who did keep up his current lifestyle and did die. So that's, you know, it is a, it is a real problem. I, I think it's probably very much, as you mentioned, the iron fist approach to the problem, but Whatever. It's not the only Fascist show. fatties. <laughs> <laughs> My new show. <laughs> but not the only one. I mean, you can see here, this is Supervise versus Super Skinny. You may remember watching this when you were a nipper. Uh, I, didn't, yeah. I, I didn't watch these shows. I was just aware of their existence. And that's the thing. I was kind of mostly aware of them, but I did watch some of them. And I just forgot how... Especially around 2010, I was mainly watching repeats of Come Fly With Me. Yeah. But I, I just forgot how weird this was. Going back. I mean, you can see here again, this is the fourth That's cam. a beautiful shot. Yeah, for the, uh, the super sized person there, they decided to get and do the fork cam. So, presumably, the same production team for the same little tricks there. And then they, they have a really skinny person who's got anorexia. I'd just be like, look, ooh, she's skinny. You're fat. <laughs> this is what you should be aiming for. <laughs> Maybe you could give some of her some of your fat. Huh? So, yeah, have a nibble on her. <laughs> Don't have a nibble. And then, and then this will <laughs> this will all even out eventually. It was really weird. I, I don't have time to go through all the weird different shows. There are a whole bunch of them. But I, I don't know if this was just a UK phenomenon, but it, it mainly after that documentary where that guy um, discovered the pure science of if I order large McDonald's meals every day, for some reason I gain weight. Oh yeah. Oh, what was what that was that? Super Size Me? Yeah. Super Size Me, where he said, "I'm going to eat McDonald's at the largest portions for every meal." Every single day for a month gets to the end of the month. Oh my god, I'm dying. How could this happen? <laughs> How could this happen to me? I made that joke twice now. But, yeah. but sincerely, I mean, that was ridiculous. I remember watching it. They played it in my classroom and everyone took it seriously. We're like, wow, eating McDonald's bad. And but yeah, the, McDonald's, that's because we were 10 and idiots. Isn't the healthiest food in the world. But once again, if you're looking to lose weight, you know, people like Mike Mentzer and Arnold Schwarzenegger have made this point. If you're in a calorie deficit, it doesn't matter if you've made all of those calories through eating cheesecake you will still end up losing weight. Yeah. You'll be in bad shape and you'll have a nutrient deficiencies, but you will lose weight. So I was reminiscing after the, you know, the, the fatty boom batty man over there who has got more metaphors and similes than I think anyone alive for fat people. And then I was being a daisy. Daisy, um, of course, being a lady, me not being a is lady. Is very familiar with reality television. Oh boy, though, I didn't realize. I, you ever familiar with the show 10 Years Younger? Yes, my mum used to watch it all the time. I never did. I didn't realize how freaking brutal that thing is. 
I, I mean, I've not seen it since, you know, I'd see my mum watching it. So I'm interested to where this is going. I, I, I'm so take a trip down memory lane. Uh, we're going to have to uh, play a clip in which I have uh, put together a compilation of this. And there's this guy who's filming it for TikTok. So he's speaking of it, which is kind of annoying. But you'll have to deal with that. Um, a lot of women growing up apparently watched this in the 2010s to enjoy the, the news of what it was like to be 10 years younger. And um, it, it was not fun. The lady involved was just a B word, frankly, much like the previous chat. Oh, all right, okay. So let's have a look. She's 42 years old, but when you get up close, it's horrific. Her <laughs> skin complexion is appalling. She's incredibly weather beaten. She spent all her time outdoors. But I think I'm suspecting the worst. <laughs> let's have a look. Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> in just 10 days, Ronnie will go from frump to full-on goddess. Anyway. Fair enough. It's a, yeah, you like it, that's great. I think it makes you look old. And do we have one haggard and tired woman <coughs> on our hands or what? Jane, to her face. Thoughts? She definitely could benefit from wearing makeup. Oh, my God. Um, I know she has a little bit on now, but it's not actually like doing anything for her face at all. <laughs> what about these lines on the side of the mouth, yeah? <laughs> She's right these there. It's not. Like, oh, fuck, hey, June. It's not me personally, and if it's not me personally, it's not going to be him, me mentally either, so, no. You know what's aging you? It's your attitude. Ooh. You need to get out of your comfort zones and start thinking <laughs> and feeling like a 20-year-old for this poll. Let's try on a jacket. No what? No, it doesn't Ooh. appeal to me. It's, 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 it's funeral. The only concern <laughs> is, is that we've got a poll in less than a week's time. Is I want you looking more trendy, more funky, like someone who's really happy. Okay. Funky. In order to do that, I really need you to trust me. Do you? No. Although Wendy Gray spends her life outdoors and has the looks to prove it. <laughs> the difference that makes. I know, it's amazing, isn't that it? Looks... You look old and frumpy. That's not my face. Young, young Plastic and sexy. Wow. Yep. Yeah, no, I, re I remember a lot of the times they would make these women and these men go through, mainly the women, go through plastic surgery yeah. to look 10 years younger. And maybe in that one moment on the television where they've been made up to look amazing, maybe then they look 10 years younger. Because most of the time they go through a facelift. But after enough time has passed, that's going to look terrible. I mean, it I think we're all in agreement. And the fact that she's just standing there, she <laughs> brings out an entire panel of judges <laughs> to come up and insult you to your face personally. She's old and disgusting and oh, doesn't she look like she's been outside look her at whole these life? Terrible wrinkles oh, sorry, there. Oh boy. Like, I mean, like yanking on her face. I mean, I think we can all agree the modern era of where we have um, this acceptance movement of anything. Safetyism. Yeah, you can be as ugly or fat or whatever. That, like, that obviously doesn't work either. But I, God, I did not remember how bad uh, the 2010s were for the, like reality TV yeah. not giving an F if you don't what look they did. Perfect. Getting plastic surgery is going to do more harm than good. I, I just, I feel so bad for this lady in particular because there's a few other shots I didn't include where she's just got out of the hospital and her face is so like blooded and bandaged. Yeah. And she's like, you look so good. And she's just done it for TV as well. Yeah. God. And the thing this reminds me of for people who uh, might get it is just this episode yeah. of Doctor Who. I, I watched that episode of Doctor Who where they have like a fashion show where they're going to cut up the Oh, human. you thought this was just like pure parody, no, nothing I, I in reality. It, no, this was the normal. This was actually probably kinder. Totally 10 years younger, it turns out. But there we are. If you want to go and experience 2010's um, reality TV, do go and check out Fat Families <laughs> because, God, that's just mean. <laughs> and if you want to feel really bad about just the treatment some women got, um, 10 years younger because it's actually kind of tragic just watching these women being so about how disgusting and filthy they are and they're stood right there <laughs> it's just mean frankly thanks for watching that segment from the podcast lotus eaters if you enjoyed it and fancy supporting us then you can go to our merch store and buy a mug a hoodie or anything else that we've got on there at the merch.lotuseaters.com and if you're interested in learning more about what we do on a day-to-day -day basis you can follow us on social media on twitter at lotuseaters underscore com and also on getter at lotuseaters underscore com thank you very much and goodbye Fatty, 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 fatty. <laughs> That's not useful. <laughs> Blobbly wobbler. Fatty wobble nuts fan batty. <laughs> Globulous mountain of blubber. Who is that character that everyone loves? The big fat one, the pink one? Barney the dinosaur? Uh, um, not wibble wobble. <laughs> <laughs>
Mr. Oh, Blobby, we, there we are. Yeah, Mr. Blobby. No, nobody loved him. <laughs> no, you didn't. It's fucking terrifying. Yeah, that's why I love 